Okay, let us begin. The, the topic for tonight is troubles, try emunah. Every single person sitting in this room went through, is gonna go through, or is currently going through difficulty in his life, troubles in his life. Ethan, it's on airplane mode. Yeah. yeah? Difficulty, troubles in his life. And if you think, you know what? It's been a month and, I, and I've been good. I'm not here to be negative, I'm not here to burst your bubble. It's coming soon. Troubles are on its way. Now, it's not, being, it's not me being negative. It's just the formula of life. In math, to solve a problem, you have a formula. To put two chemical bonds together, to make a chemical bond, you have a formula. In anything that you want to make, there's a formula you follow, and if you do it right, you have the, you have the ready object. There's a very similar formula that Hashem uses. And he sticks to the formula. He created the world with this formula. And he runs our life with the same formula. Before Hashem created day, first there was darkness, then there was light. Before light will come into our life, there has to be this darkness. And this is the formula Hashem continuously uses, not just for the world, but for our life. For plants to grow, it has to rain really hard. It has to flood up the place. There has to, there has to be mud. You have to get soaked. You have to feel uncomfortable. But you have trees growing. You have plants growing. And from there you have vegetables and you're able to live, and you're able to eat. Be before a beautiful baby comes into the world, women have to go through crucial, crucial pain. Nine months of this pain. Nine months of this darkness, but then you have the baby. You know, olives, in order to make oil, you need to press olives. Grapes must be crushed in order to make wine. Diamonds, the only way they form is under pressure. Seeds grow only in darkness. When you feel crushed, when you feel under pressure, when you feel pressed or in darkness, you're in a very powerful place. Expect growth to come. Expect something unbelievable about to happen. And really, this is what emuna is all about. Emunah is not a knee-jerk reaction. It's not, you know what, I heard a shiur, I got emuna, I'm good to go. Emuna is something we need to work on every single day of our life. Just like you, in order to feel satiated, you need to feed your body three times a day. Same thing. Just like muscle needs to grow with excessive working out, when you when we when continuously work this muscle out, that's the only way it'll grow. This is a munah. A munah only. You can really say you're a bal munah is if you continuously work on. It. Don't expect walking out of here tonight. You know, my troubles are gonna go away. Emuna doesn't mean you have no more troubles. Emuna means when you have the trouble, you know how to deal with it. When you have the challenge, you know how to deal with it. Emuna is not going to erase the problems. Emuna is not going to erase the darkness. It means that when you go through that, you'll know how to deal with it. You'll be carrying that sugar to be able to sip it 
on that bitter bitterness that you're going through. And Muna is that honey, and Muna is that sugar that you carry with yourself. And really what's interesting, there's a very, very deep sefer. It says, what is the first thing that we do when we wake up in the morning? Modi Ani. The first thing we do. We open our eyes, we don't check WhatsApp. At least we shouldn't. We don't check Snapchat, TikTok, Facebook. It's Modi Ani. Modi Ani is the first thing. Now this sefer, Bilvavi Mishkan Yivne, for those who want to know, that's the sefer's name. This sefer says, one second, when we wake up in the morning, can we make a bracha? Can we make a blessing? Can we say Hashem's name? Can we answer Amen? Can we learn Torah? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Why not? Because we first have to Wash your hands. You wash your hands. Now you're able to recite, recite uh, Hashem's name. You're able, you're, you're, able, you're able to see tefillot, blessings. You're able to make brachot. First, you have to wash your hands. So in that case, why don't we first wash our hands, then say modi'ani? Why is modi'ani the exception to the rule? Why are we allowed to say modi'ani before washing our hands? Because it's beautiful, David. Because God's name is not inside Modi'ani. Oh, so God's name is not in Modi'ani? That's, so therefore, it allows you to be able to say this pasuk before washing your hands. But the Sefer says a deeper answer. What is Modi'ani? What is the translation in the words of Modi'ani? Thank you for having faith in me. Oh. Modi'ani lefanecha melechai vekayam shehazarta binishmati vechem lara abba munatecha. Hashem, you have faith in me. Whatever I did last night, whatever I did yesterday, that's old news. That's yesterday's news. Today we're focusing on today's news. What's the proof? Modi'ani. Hashem is saying, Habibi, don't worry. Whatever you did last night, I forgot about it. You can forget about it too. I have faith in you today, you won't repeat. But the deeper answer, Bilvavi Mishkan Yevne says, just like Modi'ani, listen to this, Rabbi Isa. If you took, if you take anything away tonight, take this message. Just like Modi'ani does not have Hashem's name. Doesn't have Hashem's name. That's why you're allowed to say it. Early in the morning, the first thing that you do, you say this message, you say this pasuk. Modi'ani lefanecha. And you're only allowed to say it because it doesn't have Hashem's name. And you know why it doesn't have Hashem's name? Because it's screaming at us. The message is screaming at us. You might go through the day and not see Hashem in your life for that day. You might go through these 24 hours and you're gonna go through something crucial. You're gonna feel so dark. You're gonna feel so stressed. You're gonna feel so depressed. You're gonna feel so anxious. And you're not gonna see Hashem in the picture. You're gonna say, Hashem, where are you? Efrata, where are you? I don't see you. That's why you say Moda'an. Because even when you don't see me, Hashem is saying, when you don't see me in the picture, and you might not today, something might happen to you, you might not see me. It might be very difficult for you to find me. Just know, I'm still here. And not only am I not, am I, am I still here? I have faith in you. I believe in you. And really, that's the first message we wake up with. That's the first message we take ourselves and carry with it the whole morning, the whole day. That I might go through something today, but Hashem, you're with me. That's why Hashem's name is not in Modan. The, 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 the rabbis did that purposely. Someone asked me one time, a very deep question. 
It was a female. I was giving a class in, in Regal Park in Ornathan on the topic of Emunah to ladies. And after the class, she asked me a question. What's the word? I don't know what. I don't know why she asked. After I started to think, I figured out why she might have asked. Because she was going through whatever it was. She said, what's the worst feeling a person can go through in life? What's the worst feeling? Embarrassment. Losing a child. So listen to what this sefer says so deep. Loneliness. Loneliness is one of the worst feelings a person can feel in his life. What's the proof? What's one of the first things Hashem tells Adam? Adam, it's forbidden for you to be alone. You have to have a partner. You have to be married. You have to be with someone. Alone, you cannot be. It's one of the first things Hashem tells Adam. This Sefer writes, loneliness is one of the worst feelings a person can feel. You ever felt you did something you weren't supposed to do? The next morning, you don't wanna, you don't wanna meet the world. You wanna stay under your blankie with your pillow all day. You want nothing to do with anyone. You don't wanna pick up the phone. You don't want to say hello. You don't want to see the sunlight. You want to be under your blankie all day. That's when a person is at his lowest. Loneliness. So this girl asked me, she said, why does Hashem make us feel this way? Why does Hashem make us feel this way? Why does Hashem make us feel lonely? I said, I need to get back to you. And with Hashem's help, I was able to get back to her. And the Sefer writes something unbelievable. Loneliness. The reason why Hashem allows us to feel this way is really the biggest blessing. Loneliness, this feeling of loneliness is the biggest blessing. Rabbi, what are you talking about? When I'm lonely, I feel depressed. I feel stressed. I feel, I feel anxious, I feel I don't want to be holy, I don't want to do mitzvot, I want nothing to do with anyone, I don't want to get a haircut, shave my beard, go to work. How is this the best feeling ever? Not only is it the best feeling, it's a gift that Hashem does. It makes us feel lonely. It's a gift. So let's explain. Loneliness is an invitation that Hashem says, join me. The wedding is at six o'clock. I'm the groom, you're the bride. Join me. The reason why he makes us feel lonely is for one reason only. He's inviting us to have a relationship with him. You know what's dangerous? When we get too comfortable. When we get too comfortable, it's very dangerous. So Hashem sometimes has to shake us. To knock and say, hello, I exist, I'm here, hi. When a person feels lonely, it's an invitation that Hashem says, I want to get married to you. I want a relationship with you. I want to connect to you. I want to introduce. I want to introduce myself to you. That's that's what that's what what's going on in the world when we feel lonely. You know, I'd like to get your the attention to the board. For those who have been coming to these monthly classes, you know, I like to use the board a lot. The first thing that I wrote. is something that all of us have. A lot of us have the question, what will be in the future? My year, what's gonna happen? What's gonna be in the future? How am I gonna support? 
How am I going to get married? How are we going to have children? How am I going to finish school? We all have this question. What's going to be in the future? Another question we all have is Lama. What does Lama mean? Why? 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 Hashem, why me? Why did I go through this? Why did you choose me? How, why not her? Why not him? Why me? Why did I lose the money here? Why did I lose this diamond over there? Why did I lose this watch? Why, why, why? Everyone has that why. Why did we break up? Why did she say no? Everyone is with the whys. So what's the answer? What's the answer? You know, for those who know my style, you know I like to put in some gematrias once in a while. So if you take the gematria of the words my here, which means what's going to be, right? What's going to be in the future? If you take this gematria, mem is 40, he is 5, which is 45. Yud and He is 15 plus Yud and He comes out to 75. 30 plus 45 is 75. Ma'yeh, what's going to be 75? Then if you go to the second question we all have. Lama, why me Hashem? Why, why, why did you choose me to go through this? Lama is 30. Mem is... 40. What do we get? And hey, I forgot to put a hey. Lamas with a hey. Lamid, mem, and hey is also? 70. 75. 75. You take the gematria of bitachon, which means trust in Hashem. You get the gematria of 75. All the questions in the world, there's one answer. Trust the nation. What's going to be, why me, 75, 75, bitachon. That's the answer. It's trust the nation. Once they asked, it's very hard to fulfill 613 mitzvot. So the prophets, they went on to they squeezed all the mitzvot in one mitzvah. In one mitzvah. They said, you know what? To follow 613 is very hard. But there's one mitzvah that we can accomplish and it equals out to 613. And what's the mitzvah? So the, in the book of the prophets, it says, Tzadik Be'emunato Yechiel. What does it mean? That are a person, a righteous person, lives with his emuna, and this one word emuna, this one formula emuna, this one mitzvah, our rabbis say, is like six thirteen. You know who else says this? King David. King David says, "Kol mitzvotecha emuna. All your mitzvot Hashem is one thing emuna." In reality, emunah is the message to everything. Trust and believe in Hashem is the formula to all problems. Is the formula to all struggles. When we feel trouble, what do we try? Emunah. Trust in Hashem. And we learn this powerful message from none other than Yaakov Avinu. Getting back to this loneliness, Yaakov Avinu, when did he fight the angel of Esau? What moment was it? When was that? When did this fight start? Because of what did this fight start? Because he got his father's blessing. The birthright. Go more, go more into the timeline. What was What caused the angel of Esau to come to fight Yaakov. He fell asleep alone. Beautiful. He was going back. His whole family traveled. They left Lavan's house, his father-in-law. 
Lavan was an idol worshiper. Yaakov did not want to raise his kids in such an environment. Nor did he want to raise him, he, he, he didn't, nor did he want to raise himself in such an environment. So he says, you know what, Lavan, my father-in-law, thank you so much for all you've done, all the services, we gotta part ways. Whatever it was, we all know the story, Yaakov Avinu parts ways. Takes his whole family, and they travel out. They leave his house. In the middle of traveling, Yaakov said, oh, I forgot jars. Jars of oil, I forgot them. I forgot them in Lavan's house. So his son said, Father, let me go with you. He says, no, you stay. His wife said, four of them, let us go with you. He said, no, no, you also stay. I'm gonna go alone. And he's traveling, the, 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 the Torah tells us, Yaakov is traveling alone to his father's, to his father-in-law's house to get the jars. And the Pasuk stresses on the word that Yaakov was alone. And when he was alone, the commentaries say, his mind wandered. What did it wander to? Think about his worries. About his worries. Because that's what happens when we put ourselves in situations when we're alone. Our brain starts to think, not of the good that we have, but all the worries, all that we don't have, all that we lack. All the worries start to come in, and right away, the Torah goes out to tell us who comes to greet Yaakov? Esau's angel. So this loneliness, these worries, what happens? They create more problems in our life. And Yaakov starts to fight the angel, and he gets hurt. On the leg, in the thigh. You know why? Because the foundation to your body are your legs. The foundation of Judaism is not learning Gemara. Is not learning Shulchan Aruch. Is not learning Halachot. It's Emunah. It's Bitachon. It's having trust and faith in Hashem. You know, I met so many people in Yeshiva that know Gemara from the back to the front, but they don't believe in Hashem. They don't believe in Hashem. So how do you, what's the, is it a contradiction? No. That's that, and that's that. Just because you have a black hat, and you wear black and white, doesn't mean you have trust in Hashem. And guess what? Just because you have, you, you, you know Gemara so well, and you learn Shulchan Aruch, doesn't mean it'll get you to Emunah. One has nothing to do with the other. And Rav Nachman says, before we learn Gemara, before we learn Shulchan Aruch, what do we have to learn? Emunah and Bitachun. Trust in Hashem. Why? Because you can't build a building without the foundation. You can't build a building without a foundation. And the foundation to Judaism is Emunah. Is the relationship with Hashem. So Yaakov Avinu, as he's fighting with Esav, Esav hits him in the th Esav's angel hits him in the thigh. Because he damaged the Emunah, because Yaakov Avinu, while he was alone, he was thinking of all his struggles, and he was feeling lonely, and he was thinking of all that he doesn't have, and he's afraid of his brother that's going to come to fight him. All the negativity. And once Yaakov took himself in his hands, and Yaakov said, you know what? I can't think this way. I can't live life this way. I need to get myself together. I need to try Muna, I need to try Bitachon, I need to try happiness. And he finally defeated Esau. And Esau's angel, what did Esau's angel bless him with? He gave him a name. And this name is everything. He gave him and he changed, he added to his name. What name did he give him? Israel. Out of all names, why is that name? And this is our foundation of the Jewish nation. We're called Am Yisrael. And at that moment, the Yaakov, Yaakov Avinu gets an add-on to his name, is the moment that we become, is, is, is the birth of the Jewish nation. Is at that moment that he gets this name. What does his name mean? 
Yisrael is from the two words Yashar El. What does the word Yashar mean? Straight. What does this come to teach us? When we feel lonely, when we feel stressed, when we're in need of something, Hashem says, don't, don't turn right. Don't turn left. Don't rely on your boss to give you a higher paycheck. Don't rely on your rich uncle to find you a job. Don't, don't rely on this specific real estate agent, on this specific shatchanit or shatchan. Don't rely on the right, don't rely on the left. Yashar El, look straight and rely only on me. And when you're able to internalize this message of relying only on me, you'll become victorious. And you'll defeat that loneliness, that stress, that depression, and all those problems. But until you understand this message, until you internalize this message, you're going to be stuck in this loneliness. And Yaakov and Avinu knew the secret. And once he was able to get himself together, Esau's angel says, I can't deal with this. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't this physical fight that we were used to hearing. It was this battle of depression, of stress, anxiety, troubles, happiness. It's something we all go through. And we'll continue to go through. We're all going to have a lot of open doors in our life. I want you to know. All of us are going to have a lot of open doors in our life. But in order for Hashem to give us open doors, He has to close some. He has to close some. When one door closes, two doors open. You should know. When Hashem breaks something in your life, you know what happens all of a sudden? You should know He's building something better. He's building something bigger. He's building something stronger. But it has to be broken. The door has to close. It's the cycle of life. It's what it is. In Tehillim, King David says something very powerful. Chapter 119, the longest chapter. King David says, Even I, even I, talking about himself, as I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be intimidated by toxic toxicity. I will not be intimidated by the darkness, by this fear. Because I know, God, that you're with me. So the rabbis explain, they take this pasuk, and they explain that yes, King David had to walk in the valley of darkness, in the valley of death, in the valley of problems, in the valley of fear. But what kept him going? What gave him the resilience, the courage? Is that he knew that Hashem was always holding his hand. And he's always there even in this pit that we feel, we feel we're in. In Megillat Esther, that we read on Purim, there's one very important person missing in the whole Megillah. Who's this person? In all of Megillat Esther, you won't find Hashem's name. You won't find it. Oh. How will you find it? You have to look deep because his name is hidden. Where is Hashem's name hidden? In the word? Melech. What does Melech mean? King. King. In the Megillah, when you have the word Melech, 
Who is it referencing to? Shashverosh. Every time you have the word Melech in, in the Megillah, it's referencing to Achashverosh. The hidden meaning is that it's referencing to who? To Hakadosh Baruch Hu, to Hashem. So Rav Eli Melech Biedermann, I heard this from him, he asks an unbelievable question. Why is Hashem, why is Hashem, God Almighty, why can't he be referenced to someone good in the Megillah? Why can't he be referenced to Mordechai? Whenever you have the name Mordechai, that's really Hashem's name hidden. Or Esther, or the prophet Daniel. Why is Hashem referenced to King Ahasuerus? What's going on? King Ahasuerus was a neutral point there, no? King Ahasuerus, the Gemara says, was an evil king. To wake us up. He was a very, very evil king, a foolish king. God is not evil, nor is he foolish. Why is this comparison between Melech, which is really talking about Achashverosh, but it's hinting to Hashem? What's the connection between Hashem and Achashverosh? He was the one who made the decision about Hamas. Mordechai made, made many decisions. No, but Mordechai was the protagonist. Esther was the protagonist of the story. They had to be submissive. You hear the question? Yeah. Can you oh. The question is, uh, what's, the, what's the difference between King Ahasuerus? Not a difference. Why, when it referenced to King Ahasuerus, the evil king, the foolish king, it's hinting to God. What? The rabbis couldn't uh, hint to Hashem with Mordechai, with Esther, the positive uh, characters in the Megillah? Why, did ha what, why do we have to reference Hashem as a negative character? King Ahasuerus, the one who in the end falls. The one who in the end gets destroyed. Why are we referencing Hashem to something negative? That's the question. So Rabbi Eli Melech Biedermann says something very unbelievable. In your life, those that hurt you, those that things that take, take things away from you, those that, those that insult you, make fun of you, everyone in your life, I mean this in the nicest way, are just puppets. They're puppets. No one can hurt you. No one can be mean to you. No one can take anything away from you. Oh, he took my money. Oh, he took my girlfriend. They're all puppets. The rabbis tell us it's all Hashem. Hashem is running the show. So the rabbi said over here, Ahasuerus in the Megillah, Haman, they're puppets. They really didn't exist. It's an illusion. It's not Ahasuerus doing this. It's not Haman doing this, no. They're all puppets. Of course you can reference Hashem into them to show us that Achashverosh, Haman, it was all Hashem. And all that happens to us, it's all Hashem. When we live with that notion that we can't get mad. We can't be upset. You didn't lose $20,000. You didn't lose $30,000, no. It's Hashem. I want to ask you, does Hashem do anything bad? Can, I, can Hashem do anything bad? Yeah. No. We perceive it as bad because we're limited. But Hashem? Remember what we said, this formula that Hashem uses? It looks like it's dark. It looks like I lost. It looks like I don't have. It's lo it looks like I'm missing. But guess what? Right now, if you're feeling that way in your life, this is the formula that Hashem uses to create the world, to create the baby, to create the plant, to create the fruit and the vegetable. 
you have to go through this formula. And while you're going through it, you have to know something. Just like King David said, I walk in the valley of stream of, of, of death, in the darkness, and I know Hashem is holding my hand. So this darkness, in reality, is what's causing the blessing to come. And if you didn't have this darkness, guess what? There would be no blessing. If a woman doesn't feel pain at nine months, you know what that means? Babies. The baby is no more. If it never got dark, you know what would happen? We'd never have trees. Because seeds grow in darkness. We'd never have plants, vegetables, fruits. If there was never thunder or lightning, it wouldn't rain. And if it doesn't rain, you know the rest. So this darkness is the biggest blessing. And listen to the secret. When we start to see it that way, and believe it that way, it will be there. As long as we get stay in bed under the pillows, under the blanket, we don't grow from the process. And if we don't grow from the process, we don't see that result. So from now on, it has to be this notion. I'm going to the struggle. Thank you, Hashem. I'm happy. Thank you. Because the sooner we say that, guess what happens? The sooner the light comes. The sooner the baby is born. The sooner the plants grow. What's the first commandment in the Ten Commandments? I'm one God. I am Hashem, your God. Who took you out of Egypt. You hear this? I am Hashem, your God, who took you out of Egypt. Now listen to this. There are two parashiot that we read in the Ten Commandments in. Parashat Yitro, Uriel, beautiful. Parashat Yitro is in what season? In the winter. And at Mark, Parashat Vayit Hanan, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. What season is Parashat Vayit Hanan read at? In the summer. We read the Ten Commandments in the summer season and in the winter season. In the winter, the days are short, which means there's less light in the, in the day. In the summer, the day is long, which means there's more light in the, in the day. So our rabbis tell us, we read the Ten Commandments, which in the Ten Commandments, the foundation to all the commandments is the first one. I am Hashem, your God, who took you out of Egypt. What is Egypt? Egypt is something we all have in our life. Egypt is constriction. Egypt is this exile, is this doubt, is this fear, is this anxiety. And the first thing that Hashem said to the Jewish people as a nation was this commandment. I took you out of this Egypt. I took you out of this anxiety, this doubt, this depression. I. Not Moses. That's why his name is not written in the Haggadah. In Pesach, you don't find Moses' names. You don't find his name. Because Hashem wants to give over this message. I took you out. And only I could take you out from your ongoing struggles. And you're going to read these Ten Commandments in the wintertime. Which means in the very low places in your life that you feel. And in the summertime, when everything is going well. When everyone's healthy, when you're about to get married, when money's coming in, when you're learning well, when, you're, when school is doing good, when the sun is shining, I, it's me. And when the sun is not shining in your life, it's still me. That's why the rabbis purposely made it 
that we read the Ten Commandments in two different seasons. How do you say stress in Hebrew? For those who are, for those, all the Hebrew speakers, how do you say stress in Hebrew? Who said that? A little louder. Lachatz, beautiful. Hazak <coughs> Baruch. One point for the ladies, zero for the men. <laughs> Come on, guys. Avi, second year. Liao. Lachatz. How do you spell Lachatz? Lamed. Lamed. Hayet. Yes? Yes. Lachatz. Lachatz means? Stress. Stress. What do we say stress is? The cause of all of our problems in life. Hashem created this world, you know how? With letters. If you would write in a paper Hashem's name, in short, really quickly, what letter would you write? In Hebrew. Really fast. No, 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 no. Not the whole thing. Just quit. You're writing fast. The rabbi's talking fast. What letter in Hebrew would you write? The hey. You would write hey. You would put hey. With a, with a thing on top, yeah? That, that, that's referencing to who? Hashem. The Hashem. Everyone does this. So our rabbis say something very, very, very powerful. In life. You want success? Who doesn't want success? Who doesn't want to be happy? No. We all want success. We all want to be happy. So in order to have success, in order to be happy... When we feel the stress, we need to include who in the picture? Hashem. Hashem in the picture. You know, I'll tell you, I know many people that have tons of likes on Instagram. Tons of followers. What do they follow at? Facebook's followers? Instagram. Instagram. Tons of uh, friends on Facebook. Tons of numbers in, the, in their contact. Tons. With these people, the loneliest people. Because your likes and your friends and your contact list is not an indicator whether you're happy or not, whether you're lonely or not. Do you know what's the indicator? It's having Hashem in your life. The reason why we feel sometimes this loneliness is because we haven't picked up the phone and called Hashem lately. And like we said earlier, this loneliness is an invitation to who? To Hashem. Hashem is inviting us to the wedding. And it's just you two. The real secret of not feeling lonely is having Hashem in your life. If you don't have Hashem in your life, you can have a million friends. A million followers. Still these people are lonely. So whenever you feel lachatz, Stress. Who should you include? Hashem. Hashem. So put the hay in the beginning. And put the hay in the end. Because Hashem is here in the beginning and in the end. And what word do you get? Hatzlacha. What does Hatzlacha mean? Success. You don't have success without HaKadosh Baruch The secret... <coughs> To all of our problems is invite Hashem. And that and who, who's causing all this? Hashem himself. Why? Not to get back at us. Not because he has a sense of humor and he's laughing from up there. No. Because he's saying, I want a relationship with you. I miss you. You know, one time, my daughter, before I had my second daughter, my daughter, she turned one. She really got sick, really bad. And as a, as a fresh parent, <laughs> two years married, one year of experience of being a father, when your kids are sick, you're stressed. You wish that you were sick. It's a big toll. You can't eat right. 
You can't sleep right. You cannot learn right. Nothing. Your world is upside down. So one time, she got really sick, really badly. We went to the doctor. The doctor, these doctors are unbelievable. She might have this, and she might have that, and she might have this, she might have that, and you're thinking the world is over. In reality, she just hurt her finger, and she just, you know, whatever it is. But you don't know that. And the doctor's not going to tell you that. It's going to get you very, very worried. So I go outside one day, and I say, walk around the, my building, and I say, Aisha, why are you doing this? I try to give, be a good boy. I try to do the right thing. Why are you doing this? You know what? You want to do it? Do it to me. What does she do? She's one. What does she do? She's, she's in the world for only 365 days. That's it. What can she possibly do in 365 days? And then, as I'm walking and doing some hibbodah, talking to Hashem, Hashem gives me an answer. The reason why He's doing this it's because he wants this moment right here. And then I realized, Hashem, when is the last time I spoke to you like this? When is the last time I come out, drop everything, and just walk around and just spoke to you? Just me and you. When is the last time I did that? And you were saying, Yitzchak, I miss you. I don't want your routine mitzvot. Your routine learning. No! I want to date with you one on one, just me and you. But isn't that a cruelty way? Isn't you that look a... at it as in a cruel way. But in reality, what happened after that? Our, our connection strengthened. <clears throat> and because our connection strengthened, because our connection strengthened, our relationship went on to different heights. Now I take these walks. I try to every day. I try to have this date with Hashem every day. But before it was everything routine. I had to wake up, I had to pray, I had to learn, I had to teach, I had to that. There was flavor, but it was routine. Hashem says, no, I want the one-on-one -on -one with you. So he needed to cause this for that to happen. And I said, ah, now I know why this is happening. As soon as I understood this message, we get the next morning we get the results from the doctor oh it was nothing she's fine give her this this that and in two days she'll be okay and baruch hashem that's what ended up happening you have to believe it and you need to, you need to include him in the picture no one's saying don't go to the doctor no one's saying don't call a shatchani no one's saying don't don't rely don't go to work but to put all your efforts on these things is not a formula for success. Is lachatz. Is Hashem telling Yaakov, don't look right, don't look left. Yisrael, Yashar El, straight. Don't rely on him and her. Rely on me. Once Yaakov understood that, he was victorious. And we became Bnei Yisrael. This is the foundation. This is who we are. Who are we? Bnei Yisrael, Yashar El. I'd like to finish. There was once a rope walker. You guys know those rope walkers in the circus? Yes. So he was walking the rope, and he he decided to do something unbelievable. He was on a unicycle, on a unicycle, on this rope, in the air, with a kid on his shoulders. <clears throat> True story. Is that legal? He was successful. Successful. They asked the kid, first of all, who are you? Second of all, you weren't scared? You weren't scared? And what did the kid answer? He's my father. He's my father. Him knowing I'm on his shoulders, he's going to make sure nothing happens to us. 
he's gonna try extra hard. He's gonna be extra, he's gonna concentrate even more. Because he's my father, he knows that his child is on his, on his shoulders, and this is very dangerous. Why put him there in the first place? You, you, you hear the, the message. Analogy. And if we internalize this message and live life that way, and he's my father, he's making me go through whatever it is that I'm going through, right? And he, but, but who's making me go through this? My father. He's gonna make sure I come out okay. He's gonna try extra hard. But if I don't have a relationship with him, then it becomes very hard. Then the lachat stays without the two hays. Then it's hard to get to the hatzlacha. I wanna show you one more thing. Once again on the board. If you take the brachot that we say every morning. What brachot, how did the brachot start? Brachot, just a blessing. You want to make, you want to say a bracha on a drink? Baruch, Ata, Hashem. Now we make brachot, whether we're happy, whether we're not, whether we have light, whether we have darkness, we always make brachot, right? We're always making blessings. What are the first letters of Baruch, Ata, Hashem? What are the first two letters? Baruch, Ata, Bet, and Aleph. Our rabbis tell us Aleph and Bet spell Abba, which is Father. Father. After Baruch Ata, what do we say? Elokeinu Melech Haolam. <coughs> Elokeinu is Aleph, Melech is Mem, Haolam is Hey. What does it spell? Ima. In every bracha that we say, we always make brachot. In good days and bad days, they start with the letters of Aleph and Bet, Abba and Ima, uh, Abba, and Elokeinu Melech Haolam, Ima. To show us that he's our Abba and Ima, he's our father and mother, whether there's good and there is bad. No matter what we go through, he's our father and mother. He's our parent. And when we understand that, when we live by that, that Hashem, you're my parent. Will our, will our parent ever call the IRS on us? Right, let's say we're doing monkey business. <laughs> Would our parents ever call IRS on us? No, no. Never. You're taking the bar exam. You tell your mom, you know, mom, I took the bar exam. I think I did well, but I cheated. I want you to know. I don't know if it's possible to cheat. I just had a friend that took it last week. But let's say you cheated. Would your mother or father call up the bar people? And tell them, my son with the name so-and-so cheated on the bar exam. No. Never. <laughs> Ever. Because they're your parents. When we remember, when, when we internalize this message, that Abba and Ima, just like our parents won't do, to, won't do this to us, how much more won't Hashem? When we understand and grasp this message, the troubles, the lachats, turns to haslacha. The troubles are no more troubles. They become expectations for new doors, new opportunities to be open, new light to come in. You know, if there's no crack, the light can't go through. The light can't go through. If everything in your life is whole, 
And there's light, can light go through? No. How can light go through if there's a crack? You need there to be cracks for the light to shine in, to get in somehow. But if everything is whole, if everything is always doing well in life, and light is shining, guess what? It can't go through. You need, you need a little crack for the light to go through. So when next time we experience this crack, expect there to be this light. Expect to be this child being born after this nine months. Expect the plants and the vegetables and the fruits after this really, really rainy day. Year on its own. This is just like a little bit tip of the iceberg of this topic of emunah and bitachon. Really, if you, if, you, if you had to start and finish this, it takes years. Once again, it's not a knee-jerk reaction. It doesn't mean our problems will stop. It just means that we'll know how to deal with them, with our problems when they come. And here it's on that Hashem should always invite us and we should accept the invitation. Because not everyone accepts the invitation. Hashem knocks a lot. Not, not, not everyone always opens the door. Don't wait through desperation. Take it with inspiration. In the end, whether it's desperation or inspiration, one way or another, we're going to come to Hashem. That's our choice. That's our choice. You ask the majority of people, no, how did you become religious? Oh, I went through. Someone died. He got sick. She broke up with me. I lost money. These are the stories. I want you to know, those people, Hashem was knocking when things were good. They just didn't open the door. If you heard something, it means it's applicable to you. There's a reason why you specifically came today and not anyone else. Because maybe you had to hear something and apply it to your life. Here at home, we should apply this to our life. And all these troubles in our life eventually should go away. Any questions, guys? Any questions? Yes, Nathan. What are you going to speak?